Now that's as opposed to loop diuretics. Uh, and furosemide is our big one there. It inhibits uh, the uh, sodium, potassium, and chloride transimporter in the ascending thick limb of the loop of Henle. Without a doubt, it is the main diuretic we use in veterinary medicine. It is our go-to diuretic. All right. It's potent, it has a rapid onset, somewhat short duration, and is relatively inexpensive. Okay. That potent is important. This is really the, uh, I won't say the only diuretic, but it's one of the few that will cause diuresis in the face of severe dehydration. So uh, overuse of furosemide, the loop diuretics, can cause severe dehydration. All right, so you have to keep a, a close eye on these animals, especially with aggressive furosemide, that you don't make them hypovolemic and dehydrated um, because of this. We use it in a variety of conditions to decrease edema, remove fluids such as in ascites. It's used in uh, oligaric renal failure, uh, although it's controversial in that. Furosemide and most of the diuretics work from the, the urine tubule side, inside the nephron rather than outside it. So if it doesn't enter the nephron, can it have an effect in oliguric renal failure? Again, oliguric meaning very little urine is being produced, therefore uh, it's understandable that there'd be very little filtration occurring. So that's the debate about furosemide. More commonly, we'll use mannitol in oliguric renal failure. Adverse effects, uh, as I mentioned, dehydration. Deafness has been reported at high doses, particularly in man. There is some concern in cats, but we don't seem to recognize it in other species. Now, maybe it's subclinical, you know, when your dog doesn't respond to you, is that because he's not lost some of his hearing or he just doesn't want to pay attention to you? Um, for, in my case, it's because he doesn't want to pay attention to me, I think. But he's not on furosemide. All right. Uh, an important point is it does cause loss of potassium. And because so many of our heart failure patients are on furosemide and digoxin, that's important from an uh, interaction there. Remember, hypokalemia predisposes to digoxin toxicity. So uh, when they're on furosemide, we want to keep a close eye on their potassium. It also enhances the excretion of, high, of cal calcium and magnesium. And it's actually good enough that we use it as a treatment for hypercalcemia. So when we have a hypercalcemia of malignancy, or we have a hypercalcemia from a vitamin D rodenticide poisoning, furosemide is one of the things we use to lower the, the serum calcium. There are other things that we'll talk about. Now, a newer loop diuretic is torsamide. You can see the graph here. One of the drawbacks of furosemide is its short duration. It only lasts two to three hours after uh, administration typically. Very intense diuretic, uh, but short duration. Torsamide also is intense, but it lasts longer over a dosing interval. So we have a smoother, uh, longer acting diuretic effect and may be less prone to diuretic resistance. Remember, I mentioned particularly in heart failure, uh, furosemide can stop um, benefiting pulmonary edema. They become refractory to it. Normally, we add spironolactone to return that diuretic effect. Uh, some people are using torsamide uh, as the alternative to go to and seeing some benefits uh, from it where they respond where they weren't responding to the furosemide. Thiazide diuretics not used a whole lot anymore. They work in the distal convoluted tubule to block sodium and potassium and chloride. Chlorothiazide is kind of your typical. It's approved to treat utter edema in cattle, uh, both alone and in combination with dexamethasone. There's a, what's called a noquazone no bolus. Um, the, um, <coughs> uh, and I mentioned 
as an add-on to furosemide in furosemide resistance, though more commonly now we're using spironolactone instead of chlorothiazide. It cause, also causes the loss of potassium and magnesium, but it's exactly the opposite with calcium. It actually retains calcium, all right? So we don't want to use a thiazide in a hypercalcemic animal. And then lastly, we have the potassium sparing diuretics that act distally. There are two types. Uh, we have the sodium channel inhibitors. Those are in gray because you're not responsible for them because we don't use them in veterinary medicine. The one we do use that I've mentioned multiple times, obviously, is the aldosterone antagonist spironolactone. It blocks uh, at the aldosterone receptor. Uh, and that then uh, affects gene transcription, so less of the regulatory proteins involved in the sodium and potassium channels uh, are produced. So we have uh, our diuretic effect there, but also we retain potassium. So this is the, the main diuretic that we worry about, hyperkalemia. Uh, furosemide and thiazides, we're looking at hyp uh, hypokalemia and needing to supplement. We add spironolactone and that's going to disrupt things and if it's the only diuretic, we worry about uh, hyperkalemia. 